All right, that's Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. Now, uh, now, when, now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. How far east? Uh, Babylon. Daniel chapter 1. Now what does Daniel chapter 1 have to do with wise men coming from Babylon, from the east? It has a lot to do with it. So we're going to travel 601 years by just turning a few pages. Uh, because 601 years earlier, we have this commentary from God in His Word, uh, from the life of Daniel, the prophet. And uh, so, Daniel chapter 1. Daniel chapter number 1. And, uh, well, in We'll just start at verse number one and read, read down through verse number nine. And uh, all right, uh, you know, actually, let, let's let's do this. Let's go to Daniel chapter two, if you would. So Daniel chapter two, and uh, drop all the way down to uh, verse number. 44. Okay. So God shows Daniel, um, He shows Daniel the, fu the future. And uh, this is a record of God showing Daniel the future. Um, so Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Verse 45, For as much as thou sawest that the stone that's a reference to uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. That the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. So God shows Daniel the future that has everything to do with his Messiah, his Savior, his God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And while Daniel can see none of this, He does see it by faith, and he believes God. And that charts the course for Daniel's life. God showed him the future concerning the kingdom of God, the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, and that um, set Daniel for the duration of his life here upon the earth. So now let's uh, drop back to Daniel chapter number one. And uh, I'm going to read verses one through nine. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. 
And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well-favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, and at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave name. And uh, gave, uh, for he gave unto Daniel the name Belshazzar and to Hananiah uh, of Shadrach and to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. Now watch this in verse number eight. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now, God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. If you would drop down to verse 17, same chapter. <clears throat> so God paints the picture of the captivity of these Hebrew uh, men now in slavery to uh, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. And so verse number 17, as for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. Mind you, God gave that to them. All right. um, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. So God gave that to Daniel in addition to what he gave to all of them. Now, at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Therefore stood they before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, watch this, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. So because of what God told Daniel about 
the future. Um, Daniel is purposing in his heart that he would not defile himself. And you see that in verse number 8. And I'm going to read it aloud one more time. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. So Daniel is maintaining his personal witness and testimony for his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Daniel is dedicated to something beyond self, and self-interest and selfishness he is in fact dedicating himself unto his Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and uh, now let's uh, move on chapter number two chapter number two and uh, and so uh, we'll drop down to verse 27 and 28 And of course, uh, this is the uh, kingdom dream that Nebuchadnezzar has. Uh, the image, the head of gold, the uh, arms of silver, his belly, his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet of iron and part of clay. Representing the four kingdoms, Babylon, uh, the Medo-Persian Empire, the Greek Empire, Alexander, you've heard of Alexander the Great, and finally the Roman Empire, and so Daniel is showing all of that. But let's read verse 27, and, and is able to interpret Nebuchadnezzar's dream to him. Uh, Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king hath demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers show unto the king. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days, we would say last days. Okay. Um, thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. And then Daniel interprets the vision, the dream, and uh, explains the four kingdoms, beginning with Nebuchadnezzar and, uh, and then, of course, the three other kingdoms that follow behind Babylon. But I want, I want you to key in on this in uh, verse 28, and I want you to see what Daniel is doing. Now, we know that in verse 1, he would, uh, chapter 1, would not defile himself. He maintained his personal witness and testimony for his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Daniel believed what God told him about the future. And because Daniel believed the word of God, his life was totally dedicated to God's will and to God's plan for his life. And it ought to be obvious by now that Daniel's not living for self, He's living, he's living for an entirely different reason, and it's all because he believed the Word of God, okay? And so this is what we find here uh, in uh, Daniel's witness, verse 28, look what he says to the most, mind you, the most powerful man on earth, um, because Nebuchadnezzar at this time rules the planet as it was then. Uh, 
uh, verse 28, but there is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. So you see what Daniel is doing uh, beyond uh, maintaining his testimony uh, by not defiling himself the way everybody else is. And then you find in chapter 2, you find Daniel witnessing about a God in heaven. Because as we've already read in verse 44 and on through verse, um, uh, I think, 45, those two verses, uh, the prophecy concerning uh, the stone, uh, that's the prophecy concerning the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, whose kingdom is forever, uh, that will break in pieces and consume all of the other kingdoms. And uh, so what is Daniel doing? Well, he's, he's being very careful to um, keep his testimony pure, holy, and he's also being diligent to witness because he believes that what God showed him is, in fact, going to come to pass. So, let's move on. Let's go to chapter 3. And uh, we'll pick it up in verse 17 and 18. Verse 17 of Daniel chapter number 3 and if it be so, our God, of course, you know right away this is the fiery furnace, the three Hebrew children, and the fiery furnace. And because they refuse to bow down to the image of Nebuchadnezzar, a 90-foot-tall idol. And he has threatened anyone who will not bow down to this golden image will be cast into the fiery furnace. Well, um, verse 17, their answer to Nebuchadnezzar, if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. And so it's not just Daniel, but it's Daniel's cohorts, his companions in God's work, in God's service, who also, like Daniel, are being careful to preserve, to maintain their personal testimonies for their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because if they bow down to that image, the message they would be communicating is that that idol is God. But they know better, and they're not going to bow down because they have a different message, they have a different witness, and their witness is for the only true and living God, their God and Savior, Jehovah God, and in verse number 18, they continue, and they say, But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. 
What are they so concerned about? What's the big deal? So what? What's everybody so worked up about? Well, here's the big deal, and this is why they're so concerned. Because if they participate in this, then the message that they're communicating is that it really doesn't matter what you believe because all roads lead to heaven. It's all good. It'll all get you there. So, you know, just whatever works for you. And they know that. And they know that's a damnable heresy that will lead souls to hell. And so they're not going to bow down. They're not going to participate in communicating a false gospel that speaks about another Christ instead of the Christ of the Bible. No, they're not going to do it because they understand what's at stake. And, uh, and so they tell the king. And it dropped down to verse 23. And, uh, and I'll finish out, I'll continue uh, through verse number 30. But uh, let's pick it up at verse number 23. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. And they have no hurt in the form of the fourth. You see, if Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had compromised and bowed down to the image, this part would never have happened. But it is happening because they maintained their testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is happening. And what is Nebuchadnezzar seeing in that burning fiery furnace? Well, he tells us. Nebuchadnezzar says, and the form of the fourth is like, is like who class? Who's in that furnace? with that's Jesus. This is a pre-Bethlehem appearance of Jesus. Pre-Bethlehem appearance. So this would have never happened if they had dipped their colors, if they had compromised, if they had caved into fear, right? I mean, I'm sure we, we can all relate. Yeah. All right, let's uh, continue. Verse 26, Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth in the midst of the fire, or of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, captains, kings, counselors, being gathered together, saw these men... Uh, upon whom, whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair of their head singed. Neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake, and listen to Nebuchadnezzar now. Blessed 
be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him. Trusted only in him and refused to trust in that idol, the golden image. And have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own God. Now, why did they do it? Why did they hold their ground? What was their concern? Well, the same as Daniel's. They believed the Word of God. They believed Jesus would set up his everlasting kingdom, all the other kingdoms would be, would be uh, defeated. And uh, they believe that Jesus Christ is the only true and living God. And they trusted in him. Because souls were at stake. Precious Souls, eternal souls, were at stake. And they would not compromise their testimony, their belief, their faith in their God. They would not do it. And uh, Verse 29, therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut to pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted... Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Wow. Um, chapter 4, Daniel chapter 4, the vision of the tree, the vision of the tree. And again, Nebuchadnezzar has a vision. Uh, let's drop down to verse 24 for the sake of time. Verse 24. Uh, uh, this is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which is come upon my Lord the king, uh, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times, meaning seven years, shall pass over thee, till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee, after that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. The heavens do rule in verse 27. Uh, now, now, now look at look at Daniel here. What, don't miss this in verse 27. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins. What is another word for that? Clue begins with the letter R. Yeah, Daniel is preaching the gospel to Nebuchadnezzar. 
And he's, first of all, telling Nebuchadnezzar to repent, to turn from a life dedicated to sinning against God, to be honest with God about the fact you've sinned against him, turn from it, repent. Uh, and, and, by, and by what? Next word? Righteousness. By righteousness. There's only one way by which righteousness may be, may be had right standing with God, and that is by repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. Daniel is preaching the gospel to this king. And thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. If it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility, uh, and so uh, we find Daniel witnessing. Chapter 5, please. Chapter 5, Daniel chapter number 5. Now remember, this is the ruler of Babylon. But chapter 5 and, uh, and verse number, uh, we'll drop down to verse 22 and 23. Of course, uh, this is the handwriting on the wall. The handwriting on the wall. Um, they, they took the vessels uh, that had been brought from Jerusalem to Babylon. And they used the vessels uh, in, this, uh, in this revelry, this wickedness, this debauchery, this drunkenness. And um, so Daniel 5 and verse number 22. And... Uh, and thou his son, O, Bel o Belshazzar, hast not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this, but hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven. And they have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lords, thy wives and thy concubines have drunk wine in them, and thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold, of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know, and the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, Hast thou not glorified? <laughs> wow. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written. This is the writing that was written. Uh, mini, mini, tikal, eupharison. This is the interpretation of the thing, mini, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it, Tekel. Thou art weighed in the balances and found wanting, Perez. Thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Wow. The Lord of heaven. Again, Daniel. Again, Daniel had been summoned brought before this ruler, uh, a grandson of uh, Nebuchadnezzar. And once again, we find Daniel preaching about the Lord of heaven. Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. Now, Babylon is, is done. Now it's the Medes and the Persians. New king, Darius. There in verse number one. All right, verse 10. Verse number 10. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, um, they had deceived the king to make a law. Nobody can pray 
to anybody for a month but to you, King Darius. Sounded good to Darius. And uh, he signed it. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. That law did not change uh, Daniel's witness and testimony, his faith, one bit. Verse 9. Verse number 16, then the king commanded and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, and look at Daniel's testimony. I want you to see this. From chapter 1 right on up to chapter 6, I want you to see his uncompromising testimony. Uh, the Darius the ruler of the Medes and the Persians. Look what he says. Thy God, whom thou what, class? Servest. Next word, please. <laughs> he will deliver thee. That's the king telling Daniel that. You know, it seems to me that Daniel's got the king believing in the true and living God. I mean, for the king to make that kind of a statement, Daniel is impacting by his life, by his lifestyle, by his commitment to Christ, by his uncompromising testimony. I mean, Daniel is having an effect upon world rulers. Upon the most powerful man, men on the planet, Daniel is having an effect upon them. And I'm thinking it's because not only does Daniel preach it, but he lives it. He lives it. And they can see it. Wow. Well, verse 22. Let's uh, drop down to verse 22. Uh, my God hath uh, sent his angel, Daniel says, and hath shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me for as much as before him. What did God find in Daniel? You know what that means? Innocency. It means he was living above reproach. Doesn't mean he was sinless. It means he was blameless. They could not find a single thing in the life of Daniel that they could reproach him for. And uh, here it's rendered um, innocency. Was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. 20, uh, 23, let's go on, 23. Verse 23, then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because, he what class? He believed in his God. You talk about an impeccable testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Daniel, verse 26, if you would. And the effect that Daniel's testimony has upon Darius, verse 26, read it with me. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. <laughs> For he is the living God. It's not like these idols that can't see or hear or talk or touch or feel or help you. Now he's not like, this is the living God and steadfast forever. And his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be 
even unto the end, verse 27, he delivereth and rescueth. He worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth. Who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus, the Persian. Now chapter 12, if you would please. Daniel chapter 12. I think it's obvious by now to all of us what Daniel is purposing to do, what he, what he is doing. And it's all because God told Daniel about Jesus setting up his eternal kingdom. And Daniel believed, Daniel believed that while he was not given a date, he believed that Jesus would come, that Jesus would establish his kingdom. It would be an everlasting kingdom. And that Jesus would be upon the throne of that kingdom. And that men and women and boys and girls needed to hear about the only true and living God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And what God told Daniel had, had, had such a profound effect upon Daniel's life that it changed the course and direction of his life in such a way that Daniel's life impacted kingdoms, world rulers. Because Daniel believed the word of God, believed, and, uh, and he stood his ground. He stood his ground by faith, along with uh, the other three Hebrew men. Daniel 12, verse 2 and 3, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, that's the first resurrection, which is the rapture. That's the rapture. God showed Daniel the rapture. And Daniel believes in the rapture of the saints to everlasting life. And then there's another resurrection and some to shame and everlasting contempt. At the end of the kingdom of Christ, the thousand-year reign of Christ, the white throne judgment of God, they'll be raised to stand before the judgment of God against all of their sins because they rejected Christ. And so they will be in contempt of God for all of eternity. I mean, now, let's, we've got to uh, close this off. So back to Matthew, please, if you would, we'll be done. Matthew chapter 1, that's where we jumped off. And you see, there's a background. There's a background for why in Matthew chapter 2, there's a background for why the Magi, there's a background for why these rulers come out of Babylon 601 years later. It's because of the witness and the testimony of these men of God who stood their ground for Jesus Christ 601 years earlier and the effect that they had upon those kingdoms. They won people to Christ. And these are the prodigy of those that Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego won to Christ. 
along with others who came to faith under the preaching of Daniel, these other men, and, uh, and now here they are. Here they are in Jerusalem. 601 years later, Daniel is still impacting. Um, yeah, I, had Daniel compromised? Had he let down his guard? Um, had he uh, played the part of the hypocrite? I don't think I don't I, I think it would read differently. But uh, even if it meant uh, facing the prospect of death, they stood their ground. And kingdoms were affected. And that's why these wise men are here. That's why they're coming to Jerusalem because they've seen the star. Verse 2, saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? How did Babylon, how did Medo-Persia, how did they find out about the king of the Jews? Well, Daniel preached it in their land, in their country. For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. I want you tonight, I want all of us tonight to think about our personal testimony, our witness before others. And uh, not only did Daniel preach it, he lived it. And uh, God help us to do the same. Uh, what is our legacy? We've seen Daniel's legacy, but what will our legacy be? When our lives uh, are, when they come to an end here upon the earth, will we have a lasting impact? Daniel certainly did. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were impacting hundreds of years beyond their earthly pilgrimage. What is our legacy? How will how will our witness and testimony continue to impact beyond our lives on earth? Or, or will it? Will there be any impact? Father, I, I pray you'd help us to guard our personal testimony. Um, and... Uh, and not to uh, compromise. God help us, I pray, to stand our ground in, in a world that, that seems to know nothing but compromise. Um, God bless your word, I pray. And I hope you'll use us to reach others for Christ. Bless us, help us as we go to prayer now, in Jesus' name. Let's go to prayer.